Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo. Many local residents gathered at Trump National Golf Club to meet Marsha Clark, who was the famous prosecutor in the O.J. Simpson trial. Clark was one of six authors participating in the annual Books and Authors Luncheon, sponsored by the Palos Verdes Women's Club. Liz Brown Swanson joins us from the luncheon. Maria, I'm here at Trump National. There's been a great turnout for the annual Palos Verdes Women's Club Books and Authors Luncheon. All the monies raised today go to a great cause. And of course, six very distinguished authors are here, including some on the bestsellers list. And the most notable author here today is former O.J. Simpson prosecutor Marsha Clark. She's here talking about her story. Let's check it out. We're looking forward to a wonderful lunch here. We have six great authors that are going to be very interesting. They'll speak about their books. Whatever we earn from this and from our spring garden tour, the proceeds go to scholarships for local high school students as well as local charities. I was so thrilled to be and honored to be invited here. This is a wonderful charity. They donate to abuse victims, uh, children and women. It's just exactly you know one of the causes that I'm so passionate about. So I was thrilled to be invited. It's a lovely place. It's a wonderful cause. And yeah, and they're and this is my book, the second book in the series of Guilt by Degrees. How much do you love writing? Obviously, it's been more than 50 years since you got your celebrity status as the lead prosecutor in O.J. Simpson's trial. Talk about your life, how it's evolved and changed, and you're, 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 you know, you're a best-selling author now. You know, I always wanted to write. I wanted to write when I was a kid. So for me, this is like the realization of a childhood dream. I have to say that my life as a prosecutor certainly gave me the rich experience that I was able to pour into the books. And it gave me a chance, the books gave me a chance to revisit the world that I loved. Now with celebrity chef, author Jack Witherspoon, 12 years old, you're amazing. Talk about your fun cookbook called Twist It Up. Uh, well, it's my cookbook that has 60, over 60 of my favorite comfort food recipes. And it's really kid-friendly or family-friendly, and it has everything from breakfast to snacks to desserts. It is really a good comfort food cookbook. Everyone loves comfort food, and I, I know that this cookbook helped bring you comfort. You are a leukemia survivor. Talk about how that inspired you and, and, your, and how you can inspire others. Well, I've had leukemia three times, and during those... Uh, uh, during having leukemia, uh, on my first relapse, I was in the hospital and uh, I was channel surfing and I found the Food Network and I really fell in love with cooking and it's really been my passion ever since and uh, I did quite a few charity events and after I, um, I, wa I said to myself, oh, I want to write a cookbook. I just had so many great recipes. So uh, me and my mom found a book agent and a publisher and a few, le a few years later, uh, voila, we have the book and it's it's really my dream come true. It's just very interesting to hear the authors speak. They're so intelligent and interesting and I bought the one from the darling little young chef and also um, Ivan Goldman's Isaac A Modern Fable and there are a couple more that I'm after. It's going great. I'm having so much fun, you know, talking about my books. There's always this strong message for kids to do something, you know, wonderful, like, you know, not throw a fit. You know, this is about love and the love and senses and I don't know if you can see the books, but like being nice and eating healthy food and you know the environment not watching so much TV and you know, there's just really good messages and I have one coming out called the bully biddies soon so they're all available on Amazon on my webpage which is just egryan.com it's a great event and I've been to it before in the past so I've always liked to support the Palos Verdes Women Club because of their philanthropy and what they do for other organizations and I bought Marsha's book and it was delightful to talk to her. Congratulations to the PV Women's Club for yet another successful event and their next big fundraiser of course coming up in May. You can check it all out on their website at pvwomensclub.org. Back to you Maria. The presidential election is behind us, but for some Peninsula High students, it was their first opportunity to vote. Liz Brown Swanson caught up with some of the first-time voters. Here at Peninsula High School, students continue to discuss and debate the aftermath of the 2012 presidential election. And I had the chance to go into a few government classes and talk with some first-time voters. 
I'm happy that America does not have to delay the results of the election. Obviously, teaching government to these wonderful kids, young people, not young adults, has been exciting during a presidential year. Uh, the off-year elections are not as exciting as presidential years, so, and this being a very, um, you know, passionate election really drew lots of students in, and obviously uh, teaching them about how our American president is elected through the Electoral College, which is in our American Constitution, and why we still use that. Uh, also, the propositions in California. I mean, these were really interesting propositions. Congratulations, you were able to vote in your very first presidential election. How did that go? Great. It was a lot of fun. Talk about just sort of how you got prepared to be able to vote. Um, definitely having a government class. But if I didn't have this, I would have no idea what I'm voting for or anything. So what did you think about the election as you watched what was going on? Um, I thought it was pretty overwhelming. But I was pretty excited about who won. So. And what kind of issues that were important to you when you were watching the candidates and paying attention to, to what was happening? Um, definitely like the um, money situation and our debt. This was the first election that I've been really informed about. I've been keeping up with like all the debates and we had like a really good talk in discuss in government class about um, all the propositions. So I kind of went along with it as if I could vote, but I was a couple months off actually. So I'm here with David and Daniela Peninsula High School, two first time voters. Congratulations for going to polls. Talk about that experience, what it was like to be able to vote in a presidential election. I personally went after school and the line was extremely long and I had to work right before. So how was it for you? You said it was easy. It was really easy. I just walked in and voted. There was no line at all. So the hard part was making the decision. What did you think in terms of when you were watching the candidates? How did you make your decisions? I, I um, based each candidate on my views. I was more considering the propositions because we learned about that in class and I took my knowledge of what I learned in class and used it on how I voted. Anything you want to talk about lessons learned here in the classroom that were really helpful? I know you, you studied the Electoral College and the process. Yeah, um, I feel like the Electoral College is a bit old and we don't, we, I feel like we could go popular vote and it makes more sense to do that that way because in a sense the Electoral College could technically deny a candidate even if you did vote for the person and I feel that's horrible, like wrong. Really been interested in politics for a long time but it really peaked in like eighth grade when I started watching like political shows like with Jon Stewart and um, CNN, things like that. And it's kind of like this passion inside of me that I have. So what do you envision yourself doing someday? I'd really want to um, start small, like maybe mayor of this town, and then work my way up, hopefully, to the president of the United States. I think that, you know, it's great that we can choose who we get to vote for, you know, and that in doing so, we can decide, you know, where do we want to go as a country, you know, what kind of decisions we want to make. It's a, you know, it's a privilege to vote. And that's the greatest message I have for them, is that we Americans are so blessed and have the privilege of voting, and also to try to help them to understand that we can agree to disagree. Reporting from Peninsula High School, I'm Liz Brown Swanson. A group of local high school students hit the runway to raise money for the Assistance League of San Pedro. Liz Brown Swanson was there for all the action. Hi Maria, I'm here in the ballroom at the Hyatt where excitement is building. There are hundreds of supporters here for the Assistines that have come together. Ten girls from Peninsula and PV High are going to walk down this 50-foot runway in their debut fashion show at an event all to benefit the Assistance League of San Pedro. Assistance Chairman of 2012-2013 and today as you can see we're getting ready for our fashion show it's for the senior class of 2013 and this theme this year is called lovely so everything is Tiffany themed breakfast at Tiffany's everything's really elegant and the theme is lovely <laughs> of young women in grades 8 through 12 
that participate in valuable philanthropic works in the community and also support the philanthropies of the Assistance League of San Pedro South Bay. We have actually 456 women in our local organization. We are part of the Assistance League, which has 120 chapters nationwide. We have over 26,000 members, and last year our members gave back $34 million to their communities. We have one granddaughter that has already been through the assistance process. She graduated a couple years ago, giving over 600 hours of community uh, volunteer service. And we saw what a change it made in her life. And now we are supporting our second granddaughter who's going through the same process. It's a very worthwhile thing. To go. We've been working really hard for this, preparing rehearsals like once a week for the past, I want to say since last June, we picked out our songs. We started seeing whose group, um, which girls are in which groups. And so it's just all coming together today and it feels like unreal. It's just been really exciting because we've been volunteering together for like the last four years. And now we're just like all really excited because we like, we get to wear all these like really nice clothes and like just like celebrate like our senior year together. For the past four years, it's been great. I've like had a, found another community here at Assistines because you just grow so close to the girls and what you're doing is so great for the community. You really feel great about yourself. So it's just like sharing what we've taught from our parents just to underprivileged kids through, um, we like give teddy bears, we do, we give care packages, blankets, so there's a lot of ways to get involved and it's really nice to be involved with your community. Well, you know, it's a great opportunity to do something with your daughter while you're helping the community and it just, you just open up your heart to all these people and it's nice to share that and have your daughter along alongside with you as you're as you're doing Operation School Bell, we do backpacks and school supplies for all the kids. Over the years, we've become so close, and now this year, there's 10 of us, and we're all like sisters. We just spend all the time, all our time together, and we're all best friends. This event hosted by the Sistines couldn't have been named a better name being called Lovely. These girls are truly lovely and it all goes to such a great cause. Back to you in the studio, Maria. Looks like those girls might just be ready for America's Next Top Model. Coming up next, how you can give back to charity and shop for the holidays all at the same time. And have you been on the naughty or nice list because Santa Claus is coming to town? Are you getting this, honey? Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> All right, Mama's going to bring it home. Mama's okay. going to bring it home. Okay. Okay. Come on. Watch this guy. Oh, oh backwards. Oh, don't. Oh. It went into Bob and Carol's yard. Oh. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. Yeah, all right. Let's see what you can do. They might surprise you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that! That's disgusting! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. And in our green beat, Mark J. Dotty takes a green approach to shopping for the holidays. Palos Verdes Resale is a thrift store that is staffed by volunteers and all of the money raised goes to local charities. Let's go to Mark for more. Welcome to today's Green Beat, where we're going to find out how to keep your holiday shopping green here at the Palos Verdes Resale Thrift Shop, which gives all its proceeds to charity. They've got some great gift ideas, so let's check it out. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bell swing and jingle bell ring. Snowing and blowing, bushels of fun. Now the jingle bell hop's begun. Jingle bell, We've jingle been in bell, business for a little bit over seven years. Um, it was started by a woman named Fran Pitts. 
and she had volunteered with me at the TikToker thrift shop in San Pedro. Uh, it was a mother-daughter service organization when the girls uh, graduated high school. Then us moms who learned to love the thrift shop business suddenly weren't involved anymore. So Fran said, hey, let's start something else. Palos Verdes is such an untapped market. Now, how do you decide what money goes to what charity or how much money? Every hour that a volunteer works, they get uh, a vote on how the money is spent amongst our 12 charities. And how much money do you think you've been able to give out so far? Uh, what, we are looking at between two and three million at this point. That's incredible. Well, I've been here since the very beginning, and the way I got involved was Fran Pitts, our founding member who we lost in February of this year to a serious illness. When we opened, we were um, earning money immediately. And then I thought, Joan, how stupid. If your merchandise is free and your workforce is free, how can you miss? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So the, uh, we distribute our money quarterly, all to local charities. And the first quarter, we distributed 36000 and we are now distributing 90000 a quarter. Um, what if somebody wanted to bring some items here? How does that work? They just need to bring it to our back door um, anytime we're open, which is Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We sort through and sell everything that uh, is in great condition. And if it's not in really good shape, then we um, send it off to um, homeless and people that, could, can, uh, that have nothing. And where are you located? If somebody was driving around and was looking for the place, where would they go? We are on Pacific Coast Highway and in Lomita, and it's between uh, Crenshaw and Narbonne Avenue. It's uh, actually at 2321 Pacific Coast Highway. And we always say it's right near the hot and top <laughs> because that's a, a pretty well-known little restaurant in the community. We just like coming down because there's good buys and, you know, they've got, they've got a lot of really neat stuff. So. Now, how about you? How did you get started coming here? Um, I volunteered and Marty, who was the founder of this, um, she told me it went to charity and I got hooked. And so now I shop down here with my mom or whoever I can yeah, find because we find treasures. for a long time. <laughs> and I love that it all goes to charity. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. And they're both awesome women. They're sweet, sweet women that volunteer a lot of hours here. And how often do you come around? I don't know. I'm down here a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe once or twice a year. Yeah. yeah. So tell me how often do you come here to Palos Verdes? At least once a week. I just have to stop. <laughs> I'm just driving by and I see it. I just have to stop because there's always something. Um, there are times when I walk out empty-handed, but it's almost like a treasure hunt. Mm -hmm. That once uh, you get lucky, you're in it. Yeah, you find those treasures once in a while? I have found some amazing stuff here, actually. Uh, not only clothing, but um, silver. I got lucky once, and um, just art. Uh, what brings you here? Do you go to other thrift shops, or is this your I, spot? No, I like thrift stores, but this is one of the best ones. So if I was um, shopping for my wife, which I, I would for maybe jewelry, what kind of jewelry would I find here? Oh, gosh, you can find very inexpensive um, jewelry. You can find all that 14 karat gold and silver stuff that's um, really, really popular right now. So yeah, I think you could find something that would make her happy. I hope you found some cool gift ideas today. I know I did. And if you want some more information on the store, you can go to palosverdesresale.com. And I want to wish everybody happy holidays here at the Green Beat. I'm Mark Giudotti. And it's that time of year when the man at the North Pole is very busy getting ready for the big day, but not without stopping off right here in Rancho Palos Verdes to have breakfast with our local residents. On Saturday, December 15th, it's Breakfast with Santa at Hess Park. Come and join us to benefit the City of Rancho Palos Verdes Recreation and Parks Reach Program for teens and adults with developmental disabilities. The cost is only $15 and donations are tax deductible. For more information, you can call the Rec and Park Department at 310-544-5260. Remember to bring your own camera and take holiday pictures. Our reporter Margaret Linker caught up with Santa on his last visit 
right here in Rancho Palos Verdes. Hi, this is Margaret Linker here at Hess Park at Breakfast with Santa. Santa's about to arrive. Let's go catch up with him. Tell me what happens at Breakfast with Santa. Oh, thank you for asking. Well, this is our annual Breakfast with Santa, and um, what happens is Santa arrives on a fire truck, which is really exciting. The kids love that, and then they get their picture taken on the fire truck with Santa, which is always a really, really fun thing. And then they come in, they get a really tasty breakfast. They also get a little craft bag full of little fun crafts, and then they have breakfast. Santa comes around and talks to them, and then after a while, we have... Uh, Santa or maybe Mrs. Claus will read The Night Before Christmas and then after that we have some holiday carols. Of course more photo ops with Santa. Can you tell me who Breakfast at Sa with Santa benefits? Breakfast with Santa? That's a great program that benefits all the young adults that have developmental disabilities in our community and it's a great fundraiser for them. And what does the REACH program do for Rancho Palos Verdes? We do all kinds of fun things for them. We teach them how to cook, we teach them how to fun, we take them to the movies, we just do all kinds of things. We teach them about community service and all kinds of good stuff. And am I on the naughty or nice list? Let me check my list. What's your name? Margaret Linker. We'll put you in the half and half list so far, but more, more nice than naughty, certainly. And Santa, what is your favorite cookie that the kids leave out for you? As you can tell, Santa likes all cookies, but I must say chocolate chip is my number one favorite. And Santa, is it more fun to ride in a sleigh or a fire truck? I have done a sleigh every year forever, so a fire truck is a nice change of pace. But Rudolph, if you're listening, the sleigh is the best way of all. That was a great day with Santa. Now I'm going to go check out all this yummy food. That will do it for us. From all of us here at RPV TV, happy holidays, everyone.